Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Where the Gnomes Live. This is Sharon Oyella, and this is part two of our vintage suitcase turned dollhouse. In part one, I showed you how to prepare the case, how we cut out and added windows. I also showed you how I lit up the dollhouse. And on the interior, I showed you how I made the storage compartment for the lights and also for other things. Uh, how I wallpapered the house and covered up the lights and made this hinged lid for our storage compartment. And the link to part one will be in the pinned comment below. This video that you're watching is going to focus on the wooden floors that I put in. If you're going to do the same thing that I've done here, then you're going to watch the, want to watch the video because there are warping issues that we have to pay attention to, okay? So every floor is going to be treated differently. I'm using wooden coffee stir sticks that I found in the dollar store, 150 for about buck 25. And I'm using tacky glue to attach the sticks. And I would uh, recommend tacky glue because it's a uh, thick glue and it grabs on pretty fast, okay? You can use any white PVA glue, but I found tacky glue is the best for this job. And of course there are wider sticks that you can get at the dollar store. I found I've never been successful with these wider sticks. Uh, the edges tend to curl up, okay? No matter what I do to prevent that, they always curl up. I found the best success always has been with cur uh, coffee stir sticks. I've been using that for about a dozen years now and they've never failed me yet, okay? You can use popsicle sticks because they're thicker and they probably wouldn't curl, but they're just harder to cut. It'll be harder on your hands to cut them. And to get that beautiful wood color, I'm using instant coffee mixed with a little bit of baking soda. And to seal that in, I'm using a water-based ferrothane. Hey guys, let's get started. We're going to start with floor one, the one I'm touching right now. Then we'll move up to the second floor. And then we'll do the third floor together, which is this pull-out floor down here. And as always, there are detailed timestamps in the pin comment below. All right, guys, we're about to add the sticks to the bottom uh, floor to the base of the floor, but I want you to keep one thing in mind. I have a light that I can access underneath this floor and we'll be building this together in part four of this video series. If you'd like to do the same sort of design, just keep that in mind before you add your sticks and you cut out the hole before adding the sticks. It'll just make your job easier. Uh, these are things that I left options open for, up for myself because I wasn't really sure how I was going to design it. So I had to cut in holes after Okay, and that made my job a little bit more difficult. So I'm just trying to spare you that time. Same as the top floor here. I ended up cutting through the coffee stir sticks after they were already installed to make the hole for my stairs. But if you know where you're putting your stairs, you can do that ahead of time. The other thing we have to keep in mind is the open edge of the cardboard. So all my floors start off as two pieces of cardboard sandwiched together, and that leaves you with one raw edge, okay? And you can't paint this edge because that's impossible. I covered mine with twine. You don't have to do it that way. I can show you how to cover it here with a uh, paper towel. So we're gonna take a piece of paper towel, we're going to tear it down on all four sides, and I usually do about an inch uh, wide, maybe a little bit better. And once I have that, I tear the layers apart because I wanna have a very thin layer because I'm gluing sticks over it. I'm using Elmer's glue all because it's a little bit more on the runny side. Anything too thick, you're gonna to wanna to water that down so it doesn't tear your paper towel as you're brushing over it. Brush on the glue. Anywhere that you're gonna to stick the paper towel, you want glue to be on there first. Then place the paper towel over top. And then brush the glue over the paper towel. Be careful not to uh, run along the front edge too much because the paper towel will suck inside. So you just wanna go very lightly over top of that so it leaves you with a nice flat edge to paint over. And of course you wanna dry this down as fast as possible so you don't get wavy edges of the cardboard. And now it's paintable, and you can use any color you want. I usually choose burnt umber. Brush that on, and after you have that on, you want to make sure you're drying that as fast as possible as well. And now we can add our floor. I'm going to start by putting a little bit of extra support under my floor, because uh, I do put a brick on after just to hold those sticks down until they're fully dry. I'm going to run a, t a bead of tacky glue along each stick. And of course you're cutting off the rounded edges and you stagger these like you would a real wood floor. I'm gonna use clamps where I can and where I can't use clamps, I'll just use bottles of paint to weigh them down. And by the time I've prepared my next stick, like dry fit it, cut it and get the glue on it, I can move the clamps or the bottles of paint and I don't have to worry about the sticks lifting up, okay? That's how good the tacky glue is. So if you use tacky glue, it's gonna make your job a whole lot easier. One thing to keep in mind is you don't wanna have glue oozing up between your sticks. If you do, wipe it off with your finger or a wet cloth. You wanna keep that glue as, as free from the top of the sticks as possible so you can stain it very evenly later on. Uh, stain has a little bit of trouble getting through that glue. Okay, and you want to dry fit every stick before you put the glue on and make sure that it's going to it's going to go properly because they, these sticks are not perfect. Some of them are very warped. So you just want to make sure that your stick is going to is going to work. 
All right, and then of course you just keep going until the entire floor is covered. And again, this floor is glued in on all four sides. I don't have to worry about it warping at all. And I just stick a brick on top of the uh, sticks as they're drying until I feel that the, they're completely cured and then I can go ahead and stain them, okay? So we'll move on up to this floor here. And now this one's gonna be treated a little bit differently because it doesn't have that middle support underneath it like the compartment does on the bottom floor because we're going to actually make the floor and then we're going to cover the sticks and then we're going to install the floor. So keep in mind where you want to add those stairs. And also I'm going to be adding an extension after the fact. Okay, so keep all those things in mind as you're watching me because I do change my mind. And you can save yourself a little bit of time if you know what you're going to do ahead of time. Again, I'm just going to recap how I start the floor and it's two pieces of cardboard. Spread that glue evenly across the entire surface and then weigh it down and leave it set for about an hour. And then this will dry perfectly flat and then you can go ahead and stick your sticks on top. And you can see here, I'm not worrying about the edges, right? I'm just letting the sticks hang over. And once it's all dry, I can go ahead and cut those free. So I don't have to worry about fitting them right to the edge. And where my clamps were not large enough to fit across, I just stuck a stick across, you can see there, just to hold those sticks in place while the glue um, catches on. And again, by the time I prepared the next stick, I was able to move those clamps, no problem. And you can see here that I actually put the glue right on the cardboard and you can do that. Just make sure the bead goes right across so there's full glue contact between the stick and the cardboard. All right, nicely staggered there. And I kept going, of course, until the entire uh, surface was covered. And then I lost a clip, so I'm gonna have to reenact something here. I just flip it over onto wax paper and then I'm gonna weigh it underneath books and a brick. And I'm gonna leave it for 20 minutes to a half an hour, at least 20 minutes, because I wanna cut those sticks off the edges and I wanna make sure that they don't move once I start um, cutting them. All right, so now it is dry enough to start cutting them free. I'm gonna use my X-Acto blade. I always make sure my uh, blade is new and sharp when I start this part. It just makes my job a lot easier. And just go all the way around and cut all that excess off. Now I'm gonna use an emery board. I'm just gonna go around the edges and just file any rough parts down. And because I'm gonna stain this floor before I install it, we're gonna make the stain together now and then we'll come back and we'll finish off the other floors together but let's make the stain install the floor and then we'll carry on all right instant coffee stain you can make this as dark or as light as you want to make it i have about a half a cup of hot water in that bowl and i just put about four or five teaspoons of instant coffee in there and i'm going to add in some baking soda the baking soda will cut the acid down so it won't eat through your glue that was about two teaspoons and stir that up and I'm just gonna test it out and it's too light. So I'll throw in some more instant coffee and stir that up and test it out again. And that's a much better color. I'm happy with that. But now my water is getting a little bit on the cooler side so the stain or the instant coffee isn't dissolving as quick. So I'm gonna strain it out and it'll take all those little granules out of there and most of the foam of the baking soda. There'll be some foam left over so I'm just going to scoop that out and then I'm gonna stir this up there was a little bit of foam there, but you stir it in there and then you're just left with a beautiful stain. So I'm gonna do uh, as many coats as I need. I'll just bring it up to the color I want. So one layer of coffee stain and I'm gonna dry it. It only takes a minute or two. Just dry to the touch, then add my next uh, coat of stain, dry that one. So that was two coats there. This is my third one and dry it. And again, it only takes a minute or so. And that was my fourth coat. And I seem to stop there. Yes, four coats. And that was a beautiful color. And I am gonna weigh this down for about an hour before I install it. And you don't have to do that on floors that are already glued into your house, only on freestanding floors like this one. So weigh it down for about an hour. On this first floor, because it is glued into the walls already and it's already got a brace underneath it that's also glued to it, it's not gonna warp. So you don't have to worry about weighing this one down, but you do wanna dry in between the coats of instant coffee. And now I'm ready for sealing it and I'm gonna pour the sealer into another container because the instant coffee will come off on your brush no matter what you do <laughs> and you don't want that in your can. Okay, I'm using a wide soft brush. You want the first coat to go on very lightly. You don't want to drag your brush across the boards too many times because it will lift up the coffee stain. So just go as light as you can and don't leave any puddles of uh, sealer behind, of course. So just brush that across as light as you can. 
and then you want to let this dry. I always dry it with a fan. You cannot dry it with a hair dryer because the heat will make the sealer bubble up. So you got to dry it with a fan. Okay, so the second coat of sealer, I always put a second coat of sealer because the first one might not be covering the entire surface. I always do a second coat and the second coat is so much easier because you don't have to worry about pulling off the instant coffee now. And you can see it does a beautiful job there. And again, drying it under a fan. And now installing my second floor and I already had done the sticks and everything and remember what I said at the beginning, if you're going to have stairs, make sure you cut that hole out first. And I've installed it there. I'm just making sure I've got it level and I did a bead of tacky glue around the edges, all three edges. And now I'm doing the bead of tacky glue underneath and I'm going to add the twine as well. So the twine will go just like I showed you in the last video. This goes on all three sides underneath the floor, not on top. On top, I'm gonna to be adding some baseboards. You can use anything for baseboards. I'm gonna use coffee sticks. I'm gonna glue them together. Once I get the bead of tacky glue on here and I stick them together, I'm gonna to place them on my tabletop. Just make sure that one side is nice and even. And then hold them together with binder clips until they're dry. Take off excess glue, of course. And then once they're dry, you can cut the ends and then file them down with the emery board to make sure they're nice and straight. I stained mine with day old coffee stain. Uh, coffee stain, if you leave it overnight, it's gonna get darker. So that's what I use, but you can use anything. And for this floor, uh, because there's not a middle piece glued down underneath, I'm going to use a um, paper roll there and a brick on top and just leave that set overnight. So the floor will dry nice and straight. So here is my extension now because I realized I could bring that floor out a little ways. So I just used masking tape to hold it in place. This is uh, two pieces of the cardboard that I've already sandwiched together and I rounded out the edges because my suitcase, the way it, it's shaped, I needed to round out those edges. I'm going to add a little brace underneath before I attach my extension. So I'm just going to hold that in with, uh, with some clamps there and again, weighing down my floor so it, it'll it sit straight when I add my my extension here because it's bowed up a little bit in the middle just because it's a freestanding floor. And now I'll use some clamps to hold this in place while it dries. That's what it looks like on top. And the bottom. And again, I've got um, the fan is going to help speed the drying time. On the outer edge, I am using twine to give me a nicer edge. You could paint, you could add um, anything you'd want to add there. My twine was a little bit too thick, so I had to take off two layers. Um, and then you want to make sure <laughs> that you can close your lid. My edges of my floors go right to that wall. When I close it, they're actually touching. So I've got every little bit of space used up. So a bead of tacky glue down. I'm going to glue in this uh, twine. And then again, a bunch of glue on top of that twine. And I'm going to rub it in with my finger. Now this twine has a lot of fibers sticking up. So I just use my finger and glue just to kind of get those fibers to stick down. So my little um, brace underneath, I had a raw edge as well. So I'm just using thinner twine uh, to cover up that edge so I can paint it. And again, a fan to help it dry. And now I'm going and painting the underside of my floor. And because I did paint the underside, it does wet the material. So again, I'm drying it with a fan and with a brick and that support system underneath so it dries nice and flat. All right, so speaking of warping, this floor right here is because it's a fold out floor and there's absolutely no support for it, it's gonna keep warping on you unless you add material to both sides of the cardboard. Okay, so this is my third attempt right here. I'm just removing the fabric uh, hinge that I had on there. And you can see how badly this warped. Now I did set this underneath bricks for like two nights and it still did not matter. No matter what I'd done, it's still gonna warp. And my boyfriend told me that's because um, if you take a wooden door and you only put wood on one side of that door, it's eventually gonna warp. So you have to treat the floor the same way because it's a pop-out floor. So what we have to do, we have to put the wood on the one side and then we have to flip it over and do the exact same thing on the other side. So when the temperature changes and the wood contracts and expands, um, you won't get that warping issue. Okay, so that is wonderful news for me in future projects and I hope you, you find that helpful as well. So I've added my uh, 
fabric hinge, of course, before I do the underside with the wood. And I brought the glue right up to the very edge so the fabric will go right to the very edge of the cardboard. Now I can put my sticks on the other side. This goes a lot faster because you don't have to worry about the glue oozing up between them because no one's going to see this rough side, okay? You just want the material down on the other side. So you can see I did stagger the sticks on the bad side as well just to make sure I had that consistency and I also stained both sides as well. And you can see this is the bad side here. I didn't worry about the glue and you can see what happens when you don't take the glue off. But I actually like that look. I think I might use that in the future for a, for a beat up floor. And I did put the twine on the edge before I installed the floor. And we're going to install the floor together in the next video. Okay, so we're just taking a final look here at how straight my floor is. This floor has been installed for about four or five days and there's no warping at all. So yay for boyfriends that know how to build. I'm so excited that I now have this information that I can use in the future. All right, guys, in the next video, we're going to be installing the next two floors. You can find that link popping up on your screen or look in the pinned comment below. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.